All right, so today we're actually going to be making a rabbit plane. And a rabbit plane is actually used for cleaning up uh, woodworking joints. Uh, just to give you an example here, here's the top piece of a uh, headboard uh, that I've been working on. And this joint right here, uh, obviously it was, it was cut by hand, but after you've made your cuts with a chisel or a saw or however you choose to do that, sometimes you need to clean that up. Uh, you need to smooth it out, maybe get it down to the thickness that you need. And that's where a rabbit plane comes into play. Um, once we have the rabbit plane set up, we'll be able to take it and cut down the length of that joint and clean it up so that it, it fits better together. So this is definitely a joinery plane. Okay, the wood that you can use for a joinery plane here, or, or pardon me, a rabbit plane, um, doesn't have to be very fancy. I'm using a piece of uh, pine here. This is actually part of a 2x4. So uh, obviously something's been cut off the bottom here. I don't remember exactly what I was working on, but uh, it's flat on the bottom. And on the top, it still has some of the rounded corners like you would uh, see if you were to pick this up at a lumber yard. Again, does not have to be high quality lumber. Um, so you'll need a, a large piece, you know, two by four if you'd like, and also a smaller piece. Uh, now this piece here, another uh, scrap piece that actually came off of a drawer uh, I had been working on. As you can see, there were some uh, dovetail joints that went on the end of this. So I just simply cut those off and then cut this in half to make a wedge. Now, um, this wedge, uh, if you want to get the exact ratio that I'm using here, it's nine inches long. And in that nine inches, uh, I believe it's going to be I uh, will say two and three quarters of an inch tall. So that should give you the ratio of the rise over the run. None of these measurements are critical. You can really go with whatever uh, measurements you'd like. Of course, we're only going to use one uh, of these wedges. The other one will probably be thrown back into the scrap pile. But how this is set up uh, is we're actually going to cut out a place on the wood here for this wedge to go down and then we'll have an iron that sits on top. That iron, of course, is going to be our cutting surface for our plane. Okay? So, first thing I want to do here is actually clean up this uh, bottom of this uh, piece of wood that will serve as our, our plane. I, I need it completely smooth so that it will slide over the joint without catching. To do that, I'm just going to use a, uh, a plane. Really, you could use uh, I guess a number four plane um, or this Stanley plane. Let me show you a number four. This is a number four uh, Corsair plane, but I actually prefer to use a smaller low angle plane for most work. So I'm just kind of going to run this along here, kind of test it out, see how it's cutting. It actually feels like it's adjusted fairly well. And again, uh, not trying to take off a whole lot of material at a time, but uh, just a little bit. Of course, I do have a knot. I'm not sure if you can see that very well, but I have a knot that I'm going to have to contend with. So just take it very, very slow. And also read your grain. Whenever you're using a plane, you always want to be reading the grain. Uh, if you cut the wrong way, <laughs> as if there is a wrong way, uh, if, you, if, you, uh, if, you, if you cut into the wood at the wrong, go in the wrong direction, it will actually tend to dig in. And we don't really want to dig in, we want to smooth it. So we're taking very light cuts here. If you feel that it is catching, maybe stop what you're doing, flip your workpiece around, and continue on. 
That's one of the things about woodworking by hand. Is you're always looking at the wood, listening how your planes and tools are cutting, and making any necessary adjustments. Now this is actually really starting to smooth out very well. Again, as you can see, I'm not taking off very much material at a time. It's very, very thin. That's really starting to, uh, to be very, very smooth. I always like to plane over the top of my my vise here. That way the wood is supported and it's not moving around on me. Okay. So over on this side it, it appears that the grain may be changing a little bit. Alright. It's feeling really good there. I'm actually going to flip this around and try it from the other side real quick. And it does help if you empty your shavings out frequently. Keeps them from getting trapped underneath the plane. It's always better to be cutting than to be riding on top of old shavings. That doesn't do you very much good. Of course, the key to a good plane is keeping it sharp. And I'm really not putting a lot of pressure on the top of this plane. I'm pretty much just resting my hands on it. I'm really letting the blade do its job. A lot of people have issues planing because they try and fight the plane. And the plane should be allowed to cut on its own. Very, very smooth finish there. Probably just as smooth as uh, what you would be able to do with some sandpaper. Of course, I'm going to look down the length of this and make sure that it is actually uh, square. That looks, uh, looks pretty good. I'm also going to check it, make sure that there's no pits. I'll do that just by placing a uh, straight edge on it. Hey, looks great. Alright, we did have some camera issues here, but uh, allow me to try and explain what I've done so far. So, as I mentioned before, this wedge is actually going to sit in here at an angle with the, the cutting iron on top of it. So, Using the wedge as a template, I marked a line back across here. Of course, I started out with a line on the top that's at a 45 degree angle. So, just using your combination square here, you can mark your 45 as your starting point, put your wedge on there, mark the back side. Now, you can allow for maybe uh, an eighth of an inch, um, shifting it back an eighth of an inch. That's going to allow there to be enough space when we do get our blade uh, to, to fit in there um, without being too tight. The other thing is uh, it's easier for a blade to cut if it's at an angle. If you were to set your, your blade in there at exactly 90 degrees, exactly 90 degrees to the rest of the plane, it would be more, more difficult to cut than if you were to toe this in slightly and make it at an angle. It doesn't have to be a very drastic angle, maybe as little as uh, 10 degrees. So what I've done is I've actually extended my line here across the bottom of the board using the square as a reference point. And then I've actually towed it in about 10 degrees. Okay. I also came across and did the same thing on the top. I marked across 90 degrees, 
and then towed it in 10 degrees. Now do pay attention to how you're towing it in. It needs to match what's on the bottom of the plane so that those are kept in parallel. All right, now that we've done that, uh, I actually went through and placed this in my vise. And using my back saw, I was able to cut that at exactly the angle I needed. So again, this is not being cut 90 degrees to the body of the plane, it's towed in about 10 degrees. That angle um, is, it can be a little difficult to do with the saw, but just take your time, follow your lines, uh, check your work often, and you should be able to get your cut exactly where you need it. Okay, now the other thing that that angled uh, bed is actually going to do is uh, when we actually drive the wedge down in here to tighten the blade into place, having that at an angle actually puts pressure on one side of this wedge, which helps to actually keep it in place. Uh, if it were 90 degrees, uh, the, the pressures would not uh, work the same way and this wedge would be more prone, prone to slipping out. So having it at an angle puts more pressure on one side of the wedge and that will hold it in place better. Okay, now we actually need to uh, get this ready. Um, so we, need, we need to actually clear this out. So what I'm going to do is, uh, let me get my vise set up here. And find a piece, uh, actually they can support underneath it. Give me one second. We're going to be doing a little bit of chiseling here. And we'll also need a mallet. Now I'm just going to start cutting in here. I'm going to use uh, the chisel with the flat uh, part down. That'll dig in a little bit better, remove a bit more material. Now we want to go right up to that line, but be sure not to go over. Again, we're moving quite a bit of removing quite a bit of material here. Now, just like a plane. The chisel has to be kept sharp to work well. If it's not sharp, instead of cutting, it's going to tear and it's just not going to be as easy to use. I'm going to go back on the back side of this and define this a little bit better so we don't have any uh, accidental chip out. Pardon me here. I'm losing my camera. I don't want that to fall off the workbench. Could be a costly mistake. All right. We're going to continue removing material here. Now by cutting with the flat side of the chisel down, it's actually acting as a wedge. Every time I hit this, it's trying to dig deeper and deeper into the wood. If you flip it over, instead of cutting like this, flip the chisel over and cut like that, it actually pries against itself instead of the wood and therefore will not make as deep of a cut. That's better for making uh, more fine, finer cuts. 
always chisel in line with the grain. You can go across it a little, but uh, you always want to be working back into uh, a position that puts you in line with the grain. Now, a lot of people like to use power tools. I like to use hand tools. And uh, I would like to point out that this would actually be a very, very difficult cut to try and set up on a power tool if you were using, say, a table saw or something similar. And the key to this is, of course, not getting in a huge hurry. And as you cut down, you will want to go back and refresh your marker line here. Because again, you don't want that to chip out. Not really very hard taps here with the mallet, just enough to cut. A lot of people try and really, really hammer down while they're cutting with a chisel and it's not necessary if your tools are adjusted correctly. Now as you approach to the side here, you are very prone to what they call chip out. And that is, the grain's going this way, I'm cutting across the top of it, and so there's a tendency for that to split out. So you do need to uh, kind of take your time back off a little bit uh, to prevent chip out from occurring. But on the center of the board where I'm cutting here, definitely not as big of an issue to play. Just be careful on that far side. And since I do have uh, the flat side on the chisel up, it is starting to cut a very nice uh, smooth um, surface there. I'm still quite a ways from the bottom here, but uh, you can kind of start to see how this is cut out. Again, just take your time with this. There's no rush. Think of it this way. It's better to take time and do it right now, because this is actually a tool that you'll be able to use on future projects, and if it's hurried along and not done well, your joinery on your projects will reflect that. Now this is actually a good opportunity to show you another tool uh, that you can make at home that could be, could be used here. Now if you are uh, friends with me on Facebook, you might recognize this. This is actually a router plane. This is one that I made several months back. But a router plane actually allows you to work the wood uh, like you would a regular electric router uh, with ele an electric router except for it's not electric it's just a hand tool and so you just simply ride this across the grain and make your cut very similar to the same same thing we were doing with the chisel just no mallet involved there I guess <laughs> all right I'm gonna loosen this and drop the blade down, downward slightly, okay, and you can see it's going to start taking off more and more material. Again, you do have to be careful on that far side to avoid chip out. And one way you can do that is actually by stopping, flipping your work over, and cutting from the opposite direction. So if we come in from this direction, it prevents the chip out, because we're cutting back on, back on the shavings that we're starting to create. As you can see, the router plane 
actually makes very quick work of this. And also it makes for a very, very smooth finish where you have cut right in here. I'm going to take this opportunity to chisel out a little bit uh, going the opposite direction. Again, we're going right up to that line that we've created, so we need to be very, very careful. Just deepen that a little bit more. I think this is a great project if you're just getting into getting into woodworking. Remember that this is a tool that you're creating. So not only do you have the challenge of a project that you're working on, but it's a project that uh, can actually pay off and you can use again in the future. It doesn't just sit on a table or a bookshelf, it's functional. One day I might make a uh, video of how to make a router plane. If you all are interested in that, just post something up. Let me know. Again, I'm cutting from this opposite side prevent the chip out from occurring. All right. Now already you can start to see where this chisel will fit in here with the iron on top. We just have quite a bit of material left to remove here which I'll continue to do that and be back with you. All right, now as you can see, we've got everything cut out here. It's a pretty, uh, pretty deep cut we've got, which our wedge will now sit inside of. So uh, that wedge will sit flush uh, with the rest of the wood. Now the bottom part of this wedge will actually be cut off. I do need to uh, work on getting a, uh, a blade that goes in here or an iron uh, what I will probably end up doing is getting me a piece of flat uh, steel and sharpening that down. And then uh, once I've got it in there, I'll be able to uh, work on the profile of this wedge, the length of the wedge, and then just give the plane some general, uh, I don't know, style and comfort uh, modifications, which I'll do that in uh, my next video. Thanks for watching.